Hello, friends, and welcome to Binge O'Clock, the podcast where we watch something and then we talk about it. I'm Joy Selden. I've seen almost everything. I'm Danielle Nga, and I've seen almost nothing. Hi, I'm Jill Friedman. I have barbied, but I have not heimered. <laughs> <laughs> I will soon, though, I promise. <laughs> we'll land on something. We'll land on something. <laughs> it's got to come naturally. Exactly. Uh, but yes, welcome, friends. We are here to talk about Gravity Falls season one, episodes four through six. I, you know, I watching these episodes and even watching the first three episodes, I had flashbacks to Kipo where it's like a lot happens. <laughs> a lot happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really cram a lot Bearing, into those 22 minutes. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, Jill, I think you had it right when it was like, because it's like The Simpsons, where it starts on one tangent and then completely changes the tangent somewhere Complete somewhere in like left. the first five minutes. And we definitely got that with these episodes. These episodes were a lot of fun. There's, I really enjoy the introduction of these characters that we get to meet here. Like, <laughs> let's roll through it in order. I definitely love the hand that rocks the Mabel because we get introduced yeah. to Gideon. And man, Gideon is 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 one of my favorite like villains. <laughs> well, the mildest of spoilers, I suppose. Are we going to see Gideon again? Does Gideon become a mainstay of the show? Yes, yes, <laughs> he Gideon, certainly does. Gideon, um, true to his form, is the little bad as opposed to the big bad. <laughs> I feel I feel that's not the most spoiler spoiler yeah. to say that. No, I don't think it's super spoilery. I'm actually excited to hear that he's coming back because I mean, yes, like even though he's villainous, you're right. I think he's a great villain. There's something I really love about villains who are also charming. And it, like you may not look, I know I say Gideon is charming. Look, I say that with the biggest like heap of salt, but like to a certain kind of person, he is extremely charming. Like he has his tent revivals. He has his following, you know, even mm. down to his father. Was like, I can buy and sell you old man, which is like top tier, like one of my favorite quotes from the show, because the <laughs> father is just like fair enough and walks away. I can buy and sell you old man. <laughs> It just it encapsulates Gideon so so well. And just this like used to having everything sort of thrown at his feet and getting mm-hmm. everything he wants. And then guess what? The thing he wants is Mabel. And for the first time in her life, Mabel is actually not interested. I kind of love that. I love that she gets to break the mold in two different ways. Like one, herself personally, that was, because yeah. it's like, this is the one boy that she hasn't been interested in thus far. And two, because she's the one person in this show who isn't charmed by Gideon. Yeah. He gets everyone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he doesn't get Dipper. Or does he get Dipper? He, he does, doesn't get- though. Oh, does he? Oh, shoot. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he I feel like he does. He? Mm, you're right. That one's a little bit gray area for me. He gets I will. He, Dipper's definitely intimidated. By well, him. I will mm-hmm. say this. He gets Mabel initially, but not as a love interest. Not like, as a love interest. Like no. the fact that he knows her name because her name is on her sweater. <clears throat> <laughs> And, oh God, I, I that cracked me up. Oh no, yeah, it's one of my favorite jokes. Like this, you know, like and and for anyone unfamiliar with like tent revivalist, uh, sort of you know pop up Christian sort of things, where you know it's sort of Christian light because they reference the Bible, but usually it's like I can heal you of your malady and I can see the future and I like am part fortune teller, part healer, part something mm-hmm. or other, and it just. Yeah, it's like holding snakes. Yeah, and stuff it's, like that. it's a little snake charmer. It's a little, it's a little bit of everything. And I just, I love that Gideon is this small child who looks like, mm. Mm, he looks like he belongs. I think, uh, uh, Danielle, you mentioned this off the pod where you were like, as I'm getting like big church vibes. Like he does look like he belongs on like righteous like gemstones. A <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, Real mega church vibes. No, no, no. So, um, obviously, because uh, gentle listeners, uh, my internet is out, so we're doing this a fun way today, but that means that I can't pull up my research materials, but there is... Um, <laughs> Maybe you can submit it for the comments and we'll, Joy just, we'll, put... throw in, we'll throw it in the description exactly. of the episode so people can still get it. Yes, that is exactly what I was 
going to say, um, there's a great, a great post on Tumblr where they sort of find the, um, historical figure that at least visually Gideon is based on. And it's this like little kid from like sixties church revival. And it is exactly like righteous gemstones. Like you said, like it is, he's just this like seven year old with a, with a pompadour. And you're like, this is insane. Interesting. I feel like we got a lot of that in the nineties, like the tent revival stuff thing. It was a, it was a trope. This guy, this guy, yeah, this but this kid was specifically like from the sixties. It's it was interesting. Hmm. There was a tent revival episode of the X Files, if I'm not mistaken. Oh man, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember this. I remember this episode. It was wild. Also, a ch- well, he was like a teenager, but also like a child star or whatever who could like heal people. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Guess what? Haven't One of the seen things it. that I really Haven't love about it. we're not watching oh. X Files for the pod. Uh-oh. There's too many episodes. It's, it's not too happening. Long. It's too much. Maybe in it. I'll curate like several episodes from each season, but it is eleven seasons at this point. It's yeah, too long. just like a just like a couple of one shots, like the the episodes yeah. you tend to reference, reference most frequently. Yeah, <laughs> the ones that I've referenced. <laughs> just those. sorry, Jill. I interrupted you though. <laughs> oh. um... The other thing about this episode, too, is that it's the first one that really has, unlike, say, an ensemble of guest voice actors, this one has, like, actual guest voice actors. Um, uh, Bud Gleeful is voiced by Stephen Root, and I just think he's just the character he brings to the to this show is just so good. <laughs> um, Stephen, Stephen Root, you may recognize as Milton from Office Space. He was on news radio. He he's 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 a that guy. And he's the voice, uh, of but Gideon? he's also a that voice because no no no, he's the voice of Gideon's dad. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, the voice of Gideon is Throop von Orman, who uh, was the creator of the show. Um, it's the kids' pirate show, um, but it was like it was like this uh, this show happened and then people from that show did adventure time Mm -hmm. and then people from adventure time did gravity falls and steven universe marvelous misadventures of like that's the one Uh, i would not have Uh, i would not have remembered that (laughs) what no i only know it because i had because i had friends who were super into it rubens was supposed to voice the main character whatever that's fine oh boo uh, but anyway, Thrupp von Orman was the creator of Flapjack, mm. um, and he and Alex Hirsch are friends. And apparently, like this was a character that grew out of like Thrupp von Orman doing voices at lunch or something. Eh. <laughs> I would believe that. I would believe that a hundred percent. I mean, if he was p- filling in for Paul Rubens, that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really I enjoy that we also get. Like, we get so much character development here. We get Mabel being like, I don't know how to say no. Like, I just, mm-hmm. I don't. Like, it, you know, yeah. like, I've never had, like, a friend who I just, like, I I don't, I, I'm a bit, like, you know, it's a very people pleaser response of, like, how on earth do you say no to him? He's like, he's so sweet and all this other stuff. Which, of course, through the ep- course of the episode, we find out that he's not nearly as sweet as he appears. He's not. No, no. and he's actually rather manipulative, right? right. Because, well, first mm-hmm. of all, it takes her a long time to realize that he's flirting with her. <laughs> I know. Well, like, I love how dense in- she is. Come just completely, <laughs> like... My fa- my other favorite thing, too, is like the first thing he does with her is like, let's do a makeover in my trailer with all my girly things. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. yes, you breaking down the gender norms. Go for it. <laughs> She's yeah. just like, you mm-hmm. never do girly things. with me. <laughs> <laughs> But it's very oh, soon after that where they're like yes. sitting on the rooftop together and he's very clearly flirting with her and she is not picking up what he's putting down until it is just a smidge too late. Yeah. And then Mm -hmm. like, he knows that she didn't want to go on that first date with him. Right. Right. So then when he asks her out for the second date, he asks her out in front of an entire crowd of people. I know. And I'm like, that that was manipulative because then of course she is, is pressured into like saying yes to this person that everyone else looks for, looks up to. 
And I also love how they manipulated that even within the crowd of like, this woman will literally die unless you say it. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I love jokes like that. I love jokes that take it just a little bit too far. <laughs> just a smidge. Well, I think it certainly helps with establishing just what a hold Gideon has on the town. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I just... I don't know. There's something really nice about the fact that she doesn't that she doesn't like him. I can't even des- I can't describe it. It sounds really mean, right? It sounds to like to like the if you just took my my words out of context. But like I just I love that the character who has a crush on everybody actually does have a type and actually it's not Gideon. Like and I yeah. I appreciate that. And I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like as someone who had a lot of crushes when they were younger, I'm just like, look, there is there is a small list of the people that I did not ask out in high school, but it was there. <laughs> it existed. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely put in my notes the narrative choice to having a boy crazy girl character be like, wait, I don't actually want to date this dude. Mm hmm. Like that's it's a it's an it's an interesting and kind of rarely rarely explored choice. Yeah. And I just I also like that right off the bat she wasn't interested, which of course meant like you keep trying to make this a thing, but it's not a thing. And then Dipper having to like, sort of step in and be like, "I'll be the brother, and I'll like break yeah. up with him for you." Which, by the way, <laughs> solid choice show for like allowing that to happen, which I actually really like. <laughs> like they weren't conflicted about it yeah. at all. She was like, "Oh, could you? That would be great." And like she has regrets <laughs> about it later. But like, I love the idea that the show actually followed through with it, which with Gideon being like, "So you've come between us," you know, <laughs> <laughs> and completely misunderstanding the situation because again, no one's ever said no to him. And I'm like, I just I love a villain like that. That's just like is genuinely charming, has people bending over backwards for him, but is also kind of a brat and like doesn't Mm -hmm. doesn't know how to say doesn't know how to hear no, doesn't know how to uh, like understand boundaries, you know, just like does not it does not compute for anyway. We've talked a lot about Gideon, but I really like the thing he sets (laughs) and other people have to respect. He doesn't have to do that. Yeah, he doesn't. His that's not in his makeup. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I could buy and sell Uh, you old man. what What are the really (laughs) <laughs> no because one of the one of the things that um is in the um dvd commentary is how um one of the most important like baselines for the show was always that dipper and mabel love each other and get along mm-hmm. there is no there's no enmity there's no like eh. it's just regardless of what they're dealing with they have each other's backs forever Yeah, I've also uh, talked with a few people who say that the show is actually really good at showing a twin relationship. Um, I don't have a twin, but Mm -hmm. I have friends who are just like, yeah, they nailed it. I don't know. I don't know who they were talking to. I don't know who has twins on the crew, but like there's (laughs) there's apparently. Oh, no, Alex Hirsch. Oh, there you go. But like Alex Hirsch's twin sister, Ariel. Is is explicitly uh, who Mabel was based on? I love that. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that either. That's well, there awesome. you go. <laughs> That's how they did it. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I just I love talking to my friends yeah, who are no, twins, and they're just like, you, I can't even explain it to you because you literally wouldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are not twins, but my partner uh, has a sister who's like not quite two years older than than he is, and. Apparently, their relationship is very similar. The the Dipper and Mabel <laughs> relationship is very similar to theirs. Oh, nice! Mm. And that both of them watch the show, and we're like, "Well, that looks familiar." Oh, I love, I that. love that! I too love that. I enjoy that. That is an intentional undercurrent to this show. The idea that these two will always have each other's backs. Yeah, because it gives it gives like as at, at least as far as I've seen, which is precisely six episodes of this show. But it gives <laughs> it this it gives it this really nice cozy. Feeling. Well, you have like a home base, right? Like you have a yeah. safe zone. You don't like you, you know that they're not going to, or if they fight it's not going to last very long because it's not really a serious fight because they still love each other. Right. Like, right. It's like, it's like, I don't know. Okay. It's like when, when Schitt's Creek was getting really popular. Sure. Right. And did you all see that? 
I did. Well, anyway, mm-hmm. when when Shit's Creek was getting really popular, one of the things that people were saying about it, in part, like obviously everyone on it is talented. It's very funny, high, like great, 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 right? Yeah. But the other thing I think that everyone were on saying this, about it, uh, everyone on this podcast stands Shit Creek, so everyone should right. go. <laughs> everyone should go actually watch it. It's a great show. Maybe we'll yes, talk about like, it one day. All of that is true. And the other reason people like glommed onto the show is because there's nothing. No, it's a show where nothing really terrible happens. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? But even, but also the main characters start out the worst people. I mean, yes. yes right. Yes, like yes. I mean, the, wor- like the, the show starts with the worst thing that happens in the show. Correct. Yes. And, that's and then like, the it's rest not of the show like- is addressing that problem. Yeah. And it's not like other sitcoms where it's like all of a sudden someone can die. Right. Yeah. Or all of us or all of a sudden the couple that is the couple breaks up. Yeah. Right. Or all of you know what I'm saying? Like it, it was it was one of those shows. And that's what re Gravity Falls is currently reading to me as TBD, I guess, <laughs> on whether that <laughs> changes. <laughs> No, yeah. It I, sounds like that is going to change at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. Spanner. Ban- ban- banjo polish. Ban- banjo polish. It's banjo like, polish indeed. If you, I'm just waiting if, uh, for if the, you didn't other listen to the fall. previous episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those who didn't listen to the previous episode, banjo polish is what happens when uh, Danielle says something about the show that. Uh, I, I'm currently in the place where yeah. I'm waiting for the other shoe to fall, but it is <laughs> all of that to say, like, it brings me some level of comfort to know that regardless of what goes wrong, what is not going to go wrong is Mabel and Dipper's relationship. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yeah. No, they're, they're pretty solid. You know, there's a whole thing about like no bummers, but like, it's not that there are no bummers. <laughs> it's that just like the terrible things happen around them. But again, we have this like port in a storm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like the inconveniencing. Yes. Can we please talk about the Twin Pe- the Twin Peaks reference? Because that's like one of the first really overt ones in the show when Dipper goes to confront um Gideon and break up with we break up with him on behalf of Mabel. Uh, the club that Gideon is sitting in is like ripped off from Twin Peaks, and it's absolutely <laughs> hysterical. Yeah, it's pretty great. I half expected somebody to walk in backwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, banjo polish. <laughs> um, so the other, the second thing was um, sort of at the end of Gideon and and Dipper's fight. When um, they are plummeting to their certain deaths from off a cliff, Mm -hmm. uh, Mabel is the one who saves them both with the power of Mabel. With the power (laughs) of Mabel. I love it. Also, twist, (laughs) Gideon did, in fact, have access to magic. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, that is revealed at the very end of the episode that he actually has book two. Dipper has book three. He has book two. Like, I feel like that's really important. Yeah. Like now we know. And by we, I mean, I (laughs) now I know (laughs) that the books are numbered. (laughs) There is a second one. And Dipper has. I mean, book three does imply books two and one. I mean, but three could just be a weird number. (laughs) Right. Because it's like because there are like six fingers on the hands. And like, I feel like the numbers three and seven and maybe eight do always carry like some kind of significance. So it could have just been like a three. <laughs> you know what I think? Mm-hmm. I don't know. One I don't of my favorite I don't know prime numbers. numbers. There, could, there could have been another significance to three besides this is the third book. Yes. <laughs> but little do you know if there's a one. <gasps> Maybe it just goes two, three, seven. Yes. We don't know. We don't know. We don't it's know. actually in a Fibonacci sequence. It's actually one, one, two, three. Right. <laughs> <laughs> two, three, five. Uh, exactly (laughs) but yeah so the the inconveniencing i love this episode because it's it's this is actually one of my favorite episodes there are two episodes that kind of like fall into this category of like monster movie-esque thing where it's like a bunch of kids decide to do something stupid in this case break into a convenience store that just so happens to be haunted and Mm -hmm. 
I love that it's <laughs> skipping to the end. I love that it's haunted by the ghosts of the old couple who ran it, who just hate teenagers. Teenagers. <laughs> and I love that <laughs> twist so much because they're just like, there were there were teenagers outside our store doing uh, skateboard tricks and hip hop and we died right there. <laughs> The the rap music <laughs> shocks the them rap. so oh, deeply you sick that they had simultaneous <laughs> heart attacks. Oh god. I love how they punctuate that with the actual lyrics that were said, and they are just the most milk toast, <laughs> yes. you know. It was a very I'm 90s hip-hop. So and hip-hop so song. I'm here to say. <laughs> yeah, like it was it was daring to keep us off drugs. Yeah. Was really what it was going on. It was a very dare song. <laughs> <laughs> it was dare hip hop, which just the tamest exactly. of quotes around rap. <laughs> yeah. Now, I enjoyed this episode. I was also, again, you know, at this point in the show, I was five episodes into the show. Sure. And so, right, that was episode five. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I I don't think I knew until the last two or three minutes of this episode whether this was the kind of show that would legitimately kill off teens. <laughs> I was just like when when one of them gets trapped on the cereal box yeah. and then the toucan on the box eats him. I was like, in another world, this is actually genuinely horrifying. This is how he dies. And to- <laughs> this is yeah, how he no, in stranger in stranger things he's in the upside down and he is dead yeah he is he's dead <laughs> yeah he's, he's our barbara since like the toucan like picks up the spoon and says i don't for, i forget what like little catchy thing he says as he's like scooping scooping the kid up but the camera like pans away and i'm like off screen death and then the other team gets <laughs> turned into a hot dog and then is cooked and i'm like so are they dead that I, you know, I have seen this episode so many times and that is consistently just upsetting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's very upsetting. <laughs> I think it's specifically that he's still wearing his baseball cap, but all of his clothes are gone and he's just a yeah. wiener. <gasps> yeah. I don't know why that, that in particular, like all he has is his baseball cap and he's just slowly turning and cooking on a spit. Like it was weird. No, it's 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 very viscerally uncomfortable. Yeah. And this is what yeah. we were this is like the beginnings of what we were talking about Danielle where it's like sometimes the show is like, "Oh. <laughs> hmm. Like I definitely yeah. wouldn't show this to like younger kids. I would show this to like oh, teens. Okay. You know what I mean? I would show this to teens See, because some of it gets very scary. I mean, yeah. I think that for me, like this is where it it a little de- bit depends on how old the kid is. Because sure. if the kid were young enough, they wouldn't understand why it's horrifying, right? To be trapped on a cereal box and be two dimensional, <laughs> right? Like it, there's a version, <laughs> there's a version to, of that to a young child that is just funny, right? Right. And then the te- and then the teens pop up at the end and they're all alive and they're all right? fine. So it's fine. Yeah, and, and they're it, all it, fine. You know, and it only takes twenty two minutes. <laughs> right. But there were several minutes in those twenty two where I was I I was not sure whether this show would kill off teens. Yeah, I, I guess the answer to that is not yet. <laughs> We will see. I genuinely don't remember. This is like a fringe moment for you. This is I, like I'm a. Try- I, I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, the the um, yeah the other thing we get in this episode is Dipper's crush on Wendy, which yes, I mean oh how no, can she's you not. I know exactly. I know. How- I think I. <laughs> I have a thing about it just because it goes on for a long time. Oh, does it? Dipper's crush on Wendy. Yeah. Goes on and Mm. on. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I'm not, it's not that I'm mad about it. Exactly. I'm not, I think it makes sense as again, as someone who had like crushes on everybody. Some of them were like, you're there. You're like four years older than me, but whatever. It's fine. But like, mm-hmm. there's a part of me that's like, I don't know. It just it's it hangs around for a while, and it becomes um like a motivation for certain things. 
And mm-hmm. I just I wonder what would have happened had the motivation for a lot of like, you know, even in these two episodes, like these two episodes, Dipper is motivated by his crush on Wendy. And like that becomes his like character arc for a while. And I just oh. I don't know. I, I got bored with it a little too soon, I guess. It makes sense. I'm not mad about it. But I was also like, and here we are. We are mm. crushing on Wendy. I feel like it would have aged worse if they hadn't uh, apologies for the vaguest of spoilers, but if they hadn't concluded it in satisfactory ways, I think if it had just overshadowed so much of the show and then just never had any kind of payoff or anything. I mean, I will, yeah, I will say the payoff for it is actually great. Like once, once it resolves, it resolves in a satisfying way. But we we spend a lot of time in limbo. <laughs> you just wish it yeah, had it takes a while to get soon. there. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wish it. I personally wish it had resolved sooner. I. But I mean, I also I think I'm just the type of person that I don't know how to not appear like I have a crush on someone, especially mm. when I was younger. Like people would clock my crushes immediately. And be like, you yeah. have a crush on that. You know, like Mabel being like, ooh, you have a crush on Wendy. Mm. Like, <laughs> I like, I don't know how it's not obvious. So I think my brain is like, how does Wendy not see it? And or how is Dipper not just saying the wrong thing? And I think my brain is like, but that wouldn't. I just I wanted the resolution to happen much sooner. <laughs> That's all. Uh, OK, but it's so but it, does, it resolves it, in, an, in a fairly satisfying way. It just it takes it takes a while, a while. I take it that the show makes ex- explicit at some point that Wendy doesn't notice. Yeah, Wendy just doesn't. Wendy's like he's a kid. Like the, the yeah. thing that happened yeah. in the inconveniencing where it's like he's like a baby, you know, like he's like a, you know, it's. It was a real like throwaway line, I think, where she said, oh, what did she say? It was something like she said something that was essentially like, are you kidding? They're kids. Don't be so hard on him. He's just a kid. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, don't be so hard on him. He's just a kid. Like she pretty immediately sees him as like a younger brother. Yeah. Right. Like yeah, she yeah. is not interested. And she's certainly got enough of them. She knows how that feels. Yeah, like I, I got the sense that she wasn't interested, but I, I read it at least in this episode more as like she notices the crush. I don't have to give another second of thought. To yeah, this no, because, I don't think she clocks it. You don't think she I, clocks at it. least in these two episodes. And I yeah. again, I don't remember. I remember how it resolves. I don't remember the journey, <laughs> but <laughs> I <laughs> I at least in these two episodes, I am pretty convinced that she does not like it doesn't it doesn't even register. And she's yeah. just like, I mean, well, why would he have a crush five, on me kind of thing? She was you know? very distracted by being trapped in a haunted store. <laughs> yes. So, you know, and eating her pancakes. And <laughs> they, the they had other things to focus on. <laughs> she had to eat those pancakes. Mm-hmm. Mm, pancakes. Uh, I mean, that her dad won fair and square. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she got it for free. Mm-hmm. It's solid. Exactly. Uh, I know I'm eating free pancakes. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's any other sort of piece i do i love the um how to describe this so there's uh uh in steven universe i love that steven is like instantly accepted by the teenagers like nobody Mm -hmm. you know like nobody really has any negative opinions about him Mm -hmm. they just kind of are like yeah man that's cool let's vibe Mm -hmm. you know like lars is the one who tries so hard right and I just got so many Lars yes. as Dipper and Steven Universe as Mabel in this episode. Because Mabel is just being Mabel. Just being Mabel. And Dipper is trying so hard to be cool. <laughs> um, oh. I can't actually remember which episode came first. I want to say it was Gravity Falls, but I might be wrong. Don't at me. Not, don't at me, Internet. I, I don't know. Uh, I think it I think it was I think it was Gravity Falls because this would have been early 2012. And I think this, the stuff with Lars didn't really or the stuff with the teenagers and Lars didn't happen until a few years later than hmm. that, like in our time, in our time, not necessarily. Like <laughs> Probably. I don't know. Time, time is a flat circle. Don't at me. <laughs> Jeremy Bear. Everyone. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> this is very true. All you Gravity Falls Steven Universe stands creeping into my DMs being like, hey, <laughs> that doesn't happen. 
<laughs> that doesn't happen, by the way. We love our fans. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm trying to think if there's any other big. The thing I do really like about this episode is the is the solidification of Wendy's friendship with Dipper, mm. which I think is really is really important because having that sort of older friend who is also looking out for you amongst a bunch of teenagers. Like I can remember what it's like to try and be accepted by teenagers. And it's just like, it's not great. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a tightrope walk and you say the wrong thing and you're suddenly ostracized. Right. And I love that Wendy is like clocks it. And is just like, no Dipper was super cool. These are the things he did when in fact he saved them by singing a very silly song and being in a lamb outfit. I love yes. the lamb. But she yes. doesn't share that because she knows it would destroy him. Well, I think I, honestly, I think part of the part another thing about the Dipper's crush on Wendy that ultimately, while it does get tedious, still kind of works, is that is that friendship. Mm. Yeah. Like Dipper first got a crush on her because she's like the cool older girl who's really pretty, but they become actual friends and his crush, you know, sort of is a general is a genuine admiration mm. yeah and is very comes from comes from a very genuine place which is different i think yeah and i think certainly helps le- helps alleviate the oh god this again that comes up <laughs> it does and it you know i'm making it sound i'm i'm honestly making it sound worse than it is the the big things i remember about dipper are that he had a crush on wendy <laughs> like and he likes conspiracy theories. Like it's <laughs> if you asked me to come up with like two character traits, those would be in my top three. Mm. <laughs> and maybe where's a baseball hat? Right. I was going to say one. that's the third. But one. like <laughs> that's the third one. But yeah, I I do. And it's so important to have like the resonation, the like the resonating good friendships in shows like this, I think, because like there are so many where it's just like, and you're on your own and you're being bullied and like nobody accepts you. And it's like, well, but what if you had like a weird summer and like, you know, like I also really like that, like we get to see the progression of Grunkle Stan wanting to hang out with his great niece and nephew yeah. and be like, actually, I think you kids are super cute and cool. Maybe we could all hang <laughs> and like go to the diner and just leave this dude in the in the store while he picks out a shirt. <laughs> Puma know? shirt, panther shirt. Puma shirt, <laughs> panther shirt. Do they sell those? Because I feel like I need both of them. <laughs> both of them. <laughs> uh, I feel like they were sold at one point, Damn but it. I do not recall if I've ever seen them in the, in the wild. <sighs> I need them. I need both of those shirts. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here like, yes. why not both? But like, I, you know, like we get this slow progression with Grunkle Stan actually wanting to hang out with his great niece and great nephew. We get this like, you know, this Wendy friendship. We get the Zeus is like super brilliantly protective and like gung ho for anything. Mm-hmm. God, I love Zeus. Me too. I like Zeus is like outside of of the like the big three, which in my brain is Grunkle Stan, Dipper and Mabel. Like Zeus is like just below them. <laughs> Like, if he's even below anybody, he's probably top tier. But, like, I have to give credit where credit's due for the stars of the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, you haven't, he hasn't even begun to, sh- begun to shine as he shines. Like, I know. No, I know. <gasps> oh, I'm so he's excited. Still, he, he's, he's already, like, the best, but, like, the, the, there, we do get a couple of Seuss centric episodes, and they're honestly some of the best in the yeah. whole show, if I'm, if I'm being <gasps> honest. Yeah, no, the Zeus centric episodes are probably in my like top five. Several, several of them are in my top five. They're just, they're really good. It's just, he's such a good character and you don't really get a lot of him yet. But man, when they really start to let him shine, he really shines. Okay, Dipper versus Manliness. Well, we oh, talked about oh, the diet. I had, I had, I had two more things about uh, the inconvenience. Oh, sure. Actually, three. One, the Duchess approves is so good. The what? The Duchess approves the show. Stan, the show Grunkle Stan is watching. Oh yeah, <laughs> the show he gets trapped watching because Mabel and Just, Dipper aren't there to bring him the remote. Oh and then yes, by yeah. The end, if we didn't talk about that, that was going to be a one more thing for me. <laughs> by the end of the <laughs> entire thing, he's got like his tub of ice cream and is obsessed. Oh god. Yes, yes. I love best. that. <gasps> it's like my life best, in best, a way. Best. Um, <laughs> two. This is just. I also an really like the probably scarred for life. Yes, yes. Uh, to the Lammy dance is giving big Boimler energy. Obviously, that's Boimler is from Star Trek Lower Decks and is, you know, 
a relatively new thing comparatively, but they're like, I could just Mm -hmm. mentally like copy paste Boimler into that situation. And it it, it worked (laughs) seamlessly. Yeah. I was looking down at my notes and I found the, uh, I found the, when I wrote the, Oh no, the Wendy crush. Oh no, the Wendy crush. (laughs) My notes. I also just say, I also love exclamation point. (laughs) I just wrote, Oh no, she's hot. Oh no, she's hot. (laughs) I know she's hot. Right away. <laughs> <laughs> I like the name of the convenience store. Oh, Dusk the Dawn to Dusk? Dusk. Dusk. Yeah. Dawn to Dusk. Dun, yeah. Dun yeah. Dun to Dusk. Uh, and I also like Dipper's nickname, Dr. Fun Times. <laughs> I thought Dr. Fun Times was a pretty great nickname that a bunch of teenagers came up with. <laughs> Dr. Fun Times. Dr. Fun Times is pretty great. It's pretty all the originality of uh, All the originality. 16-year-old can muster. I also wrote down Mabel ate dust, lol. I mean, yes. Like, if we had not mentioned that, I would have come back to that. It's my one more thing, because I love that in this episode, the teens get trapped in a haunted house and Dipper has to help save everyone. And Mabel doesn't help in any way, shape or form because she's not just high. She's she high the entire time. Balls. Tripping. Yeah. Just. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that she's tripping on like the over the counter like fun dip. <laughs> like I didn't know they still made this. And then it's like, oh boy. Oh no. How many of those did you eat, buddy? <laughs> yeah. Right. So yes. Her like big eye thing where she's like chewing on she she thinks she's chewing on something, but she's not in fact chewing on something. Oh no. man. Yeah. Oh, Mabel. <laughs> she is just she is just seeing stuff that ain't there. It's a real centaur world fever yeah, thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, yes. Dipper versus manliness. Hooray! Where we finally meet the manators. The manators! Yes, I love them so much. Oh, half man. Half man! I don't know why. Half! Tor! <laughs> Tor! <laughs> Alright, what was everybody's favorite uh, manator name? I mean, I really liked Hutzbar. Yeah. I stand Hutzbar. Man, Hutzbar shows up and he's just like, I just wanted some jerky. Oh, no, I smell emotional <laughs> issues. Do you want to talk about it, buddy? I'm like, talk about a dude who is supposed to be chock full of testosterone and manly weird gender roles. And he's like, let's sit down and talk about our feelings. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and this is the first one you meet. And then it's like, oh, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the manators in the in the man cave are not quite as in touch with their feminine side as it's far as, but that's also why I like him. <laughs> yeah. You get the, you get the variety as a character. It's far as definitely my favorite one, but come on. Pituitar. Pituitar yep. is pretty good as a name. That yes. Darn long, pituitar, so long. <laughs> pituitary gland refuses to leave us alone. To run away. Yes. Long standing listeners of the show will know our long time fight with the pituitary gland <laughs> and how it keeps trying to take over our show, but it's not allowed. <laughs> the pituitary gland is its own thing. It doesn't do the things that everyone thinks it does. <laughs> and that specifically Fringe thinks it does. <laughs> Specifically fringe. How did I know this was how did I know this was gonna go back to fringe? How did I know? (laughs) Because I mean we're talking about half man, half tart. Exactly. (laughs) Of course it's fringe. (laughs) Destructor. I love that Stipper Destructor. Destructor. I look, the names are all pretty great. I like the uh I like the Lederar Lederar. or whatever his name is. (laughs) Oh, the little old man who dies. There is death in this show. I know. He's just the offering. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. What do we have to say about Dipper versus Madliness? (laughs) I will say this is one of my least favorite to rewatch just because there's just a lot of a lot of cringe to it. But I also appreciate that that's me coming to that as an adult. And I'm sure that there are plenty of kids who need this story told in this way. Hmm. I like the choice that Dipper gets of just being like, because he's already kind of not too keen. You know, the the Manators basically take him in to, well, I mean, I know we already talked about the diner, but like he's he's having a crisis of manliness. Mm-hmm. He doesn't even have a chest hair. He can't even squeeze. First of all, those machines are always rigged, Dipper. Please don't feel bad. Like, <laughs> they're... 
Those machines are always rigged. This is just a, this is just, it's fine. We meet Lazy Susan. Bless her. We love her. <laughs> love her to pieces. Jennifer uh, Coolidge. Oh. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting about I that. I didn't know that. That's amazing. <laughs> and now, now you're going to hear Jennifer Coolidge. Now time. I'm going to be able to hear it. <laughs> the gays are trying to kill me. <laughs> Do you know these gays? I think they're trying to kill me. Oh, what? How many cats does she have? Forty cats. Oh God. Thirty-seven cats. I don't think we actually get a number, but it's 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 lots of cats. Yeah. <laughs> a friend, of, a friend of mine once said many. that. Yes, uh, a friend of mine once said something that actually works with this episode really well, which is uh, there is no hard and fast number for when there's too many cats or too many tattoos, but you do know once you've crossed that number. Once you've crossed that line. <laughs> you know it when you see it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, but Dipper's choice. Yes, yes. so Dipper, uh, you know, gets trained by all these manators. He thinks he's, like, sort of there already. He's like, yeah, I'm ready, I'm good. And they're like, okay, one more test, one more trial. And he's supposed to go kill the multi-bear. And he's like, what? What's a multi-bear? Um, hmm. Well, I just love that the multi-bear is what it says on the tin. <laughs> oh, completely. Completely. Did you guys happen to catch who the voice of the multi-bear was? No. Alfred Molina. Nice. Oh! All right. I love that. Now I can see it. I'm terrible at identifying voices. Yeah, unless they're being very specifically a certain way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God, they don't even have him on that. There he is. Oh, Jeez. you found him. I was going to say, they don't even have him on the IMDb page, like, high enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, when Dipper goes to kill the multi-bear, he is about to conquer the man multi-bear and then realizes that they share a love of, quote, Icelandic pop sensation Baba. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this was some creative copyright. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So I never noticed it until I just rewatched it uh, for this podcast. But the music really does sound like what if Sigur Ross did ABBA? And it's really funny. (laughs) Oh, man. Sorry, what was the first band? Uh, Sigur Ross. They're they're an Icelandic band. Um. They're they're p- thing people most know them for. Um, I think the band Metric. Sigur Ross is a person, and I think she was in Metric. Um, so, like the Garden State soundtrack had a couple of her tracks. You know, just like oh. breathy and Icelandic. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool! Yeah, no, I don't think I'm familiar with them, but that's neat. I love that it's like a very recognizable thing. I dig it. Did not did not catch it until uh, just tonight, but it was really funny. I just I love that they were able to say Baba and that was somehow enough. Baba. <laughs> well, it's like uh, like how is that enough? It's like in um, Riverdale when they when they do names, it's very much like that where it's like Brad Rayberry or um, Glamour J Eggs, <laughs> mm. where it's just like you know what they're actually Fun talking story? about. I haven't seen that one. Me neither. Ah. Maybe we should watch River. <laughs> oh, no, wait. Man. That's got to be too many seasons. That's got to be too many it's seasons. It's seven right? seasons. That show went on for a long time. It, uh, next Whoa. week is the series finale. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, that, that show's been on for too yeah, long. Yeah, it has. I'm like, oh, that's a long show. That seems like a really big commitment. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, you know, I was talking about X-Files before, and I'm not even 100% sure the X-File is done, but like, I know. Oh, that Riverdale has been doing things for a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a pretty nutty show. If you're actually interested at all in like getting a getting a vibe for it, Super Eye Patch Wolf and Alex Myers both have really good YouTube videos about Riverdale that are um, they're just so funny to watch <laughs> and very different because they because those those two those two YouTube YouTubers have a very different vibe. But their takes on Riverdale are worth uh, watching. Hmm. Hot. The hottest of takes. The hottest of takes. Hot goss. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I am intrigued by Riverdale. I think it just hasn't been on my radar because I don't know. I was in the, like, I, I'm not really of that Jughead life. <laughs> and I was like, I'm OK, weird. I'm. Eh. Yeah, I have I have opinions about Riverdale, but we don't need to go into them now. <laughs> 
<laughs> sure. I'm like, I have zero. But yeah, no, I, people kept describing it to me, and I was just like, I mean, I've read a couple Jughead comics. It's not really, I mean, yay, queer rep, but it's not enough. It wasn't enough to drag me in. Mm. Mm-hmm. Although. Jughead isn't even queer in the show. I did watch Shira for the Rainbow. Sure. And I have regrets. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh no. I don't I my my hot takes are very fast. I don't I didn't enjoy watching Shira because I didn't enjoy how dumb Shira was in the new show. I was like, my princess isn't ridiculously intelligent. Like she might be a jock, but like she doesn't make stupid decisions. Mm. And like the more I watched Shira, the more I was like, oh God, she's the are we the baddies person? What do you mean you don't know if you're the baddie? What is happening right now? <laughs> like she's a himbo. <laughs> like Himbo being a gender neutral term, that's what she was. Yeah, no, I my Shira is not that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> not my Shira. Shira wouldn't hear. Yeah, and then I shot a princess in training because that's what you do. My Shira would have been like, I shot a princess. You want me to shoot princesses? Why on earth am I shooting princesses? <laughs> what did the princesses ever do? I don't know. I just I felt like they could have handled it a bit better, and I was just like, I can't. She's so dumb, and I like sat there and watched it for all the other characters because I could not. <laughs> I could not with her. I was like, I have to watch it. I have to watch it for the queer community, for the queer representation, but I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Where? I, yes, she's queer and she's allowed to be dumb, I guess. Great. <laughs> I eventually just was in it for uh, Mermista and um, the pirate guy. Mm. Who wasn't really? There were some really great ships in that show. But anyway, again, I watched it for everybody but Shira. I was like, this show is great. Except for that one main ca- title character. <laughs> Except for the one who the show's about. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't stand her. I was just like, oh, okay, great. Got it. I, I knew what I was getting into. I knew I wanted to watch the show. I brought this upon myself. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the the I love that he has this choice to not kill the multi-bear because he's like, damn it, I'm allowed to have layers. <laughs> I don't have to be one thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, wasn't that basically what Chutzpah was trying to get across anyway? What that he that the Manators were trying to get across? Yeah, that he could be a multi he could be a multifaceted person. I don't know. Well, that's what Chutzpah was trying to get across. That's what I'm saying. The mul- the the rest of them were like, you need to kill the multi bear to be a man. Yeah. <laughs> like this is why I'm like Chutzpah. Why are you hanging out with these knuckleheads? <laughs> like you deserve so much better. Let's borrow the multi bear. Like, should go that, hang out. You know, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, should. I ship it. Should. I ship it. Uh, that's also why I like Grunkle Stan, who it's sort of established is the manliest because of all his chest hair at the very beginning of the episode. Yep. And just like he's like, yeah, that was that was really manly of you. Like you stood up for what you believed in. This it's like the most manly thing you could possibly do. And I was just like, oh, no, yeah, that's kind of cute. <laughs> I also, I also love that he actually gets a chest hair gets at the end of it. Hair. <laughs> Mabel, Mabel takes it for the scrapbook. <laughs> Please tell God. me this scrapbook is something that comes back in the show. Banjo polish. It's actually book one. Yeah, banjo polish. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not. But it's not book one. I promise. No, but there's. Uh, I also really like the B plot of this episode, which is Mabel playing matchmaker <laughs> with Grunkle Stan. <laughs> And lazy Susan. Well, Grunkle Stan has a crush. And Mabel is, I guess, really good at picking up on when other people are in love. Yes. Honey, wasp, kitten, baby is the thing I wrote down. <laughs> that was really funny. I I had to write that down. I think I actually paused the episode to actually write down all the words <laughs> that were said. I was like, hey, wifey, I've got a new nickname for you. <laughs> Honey, wasp, kitten, baby. <laughs> It was just so beautifully stupid. I really baby. enjoyed that. <laughs> but yeah, we get we get this montage of her trying thing after thing after thing. And after all of it, he looks worse. He look, I also loved the, the Which the is hand- still my favorite. I love the the, the, the lampshade hang. I love the before hang. picture and then it cuts to him. Yes. I love the lampshade hang where she's like, all right, we're going to need a montage. And she has like the training mix. The montage mix. Montage mix. I think that's, is that our like fourth montage joke in this podcast, Danielle? I mean, maybe. We watch. I feel like we watch a lot of things with montage jokes. Galavan had one. 
Yep. Did Kipo have one? A montage? She, it Surely must have. Was a montage in Kipo. But there were, what there were, was there like a montage song joke about the fact that they were having a montage? There was, was that like eye of, there was that like Eye of the Tiger song when Gallivant is training. There is a training montage. Yes. Well, in Gallivant, but is there one in Kipo? Oh, why Shit, did I? Now I have to. I was just Dang, trying to now think I have of to like look it up. other shows that we had watch yes. together no gallivant 100 percent has a montage song which is never as fun on the album and i'm always sad never about as it fun on the album uh i always skip it on the album Are and i feel bad here, because like... it's one of my favorite jokes <laughs> it's one of my favorite jokes but the song itself is not funny now we're anyway. just listing montages <laughs> i know i actually wrote down emotional issues <laughs> we're at all i also wrote down Reverse psychology for the win. For the win. I feel something kind of funny happening in my brain, but it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I also wrote down the dipper whale, which I think is like the sound he makes when he's scared. <laughs> it's like a what? <laughs> and it's like very funny. I don't know why I wrote it down, but I was just like, I feel like I need to note this down for prosperity. <laughs> um, the deer nod is my other favorite manly thing that happens in this episode because he's drinking water mm-hmm. at like a river mm-hmm. and he nods to a deer and the deer nods back. <laughs> that was really funny. I love it so much. I love it so much. There's something like, you know, like as as obviously toxically masculine as some of the minotaurs are, manotars are, like there's some level of non-toxic masculinity that I think they're able to kind of intersperse you know, like interspersed throughout the episode. I can't describe it any better than that. And like vibing like, with wild animals is in that bucket for you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like a deer that's like, I see you. I appreciate you. And then like bounce off into the trees, you know, like I appreciate the work you've put into your very mi- minuscule, <laughs> minuscule muscles that you've obviously just gotten and all your tattoos, all your, tattoos. All your temporary tattoos. <laughs> Bless. What, I what think did the word on his arm thing? say? Was it like rad boy or something? Yeah. I think it was. Oh. Or, was it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think it was like rad boy. Rad boy. Which is the funniest. <laughs> which is like the funniest thing you could possibly put on a small boy's forearm. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it to pieces. Uh, if there's nothing else about this episode, I think we're at one more thing. Uh, unless we talked about all your one more things. I have a one more thing. I like that Lil Gideon has a version of Zeus. That was oh, called yeah. Zeus. The doppelganger. The doppelganger. And I love that they clock each other. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> eyes It's narrow. like one of my favorite things. It's just like Zeus and Deuce. And I'm just like, I, I de- like, I know we joked about shipping before, but I'm just like, I want them to be like enemies to friends to lovers. <laughs> like, I just, I want it in my heart of hearts. Do you have a one more thing? Or you could take a second to to think about it. Take a look at your notes. Yeah. Um, you can always do a, a quote to Jill if you don't have an actual one more thing. We've definitely done quotes before because we're like, I don't know. Things are fun. <laughs> um, I actually do have one more thing. Uh, in in uh-huh. uh, The Hand That Rocks of Mabel, uh, we get two of some of the earliest memes that came out of the show. Um, we actually missed the earliest meme mm. that came out of the show. I'll explain that in a second. But... Um, I will pardon nothing when uh, uh, Grunkle Stan goes to the the Gleeful's house and it says pardon this mess. He's like, I will pardon nothing. Um, And then like mere seconds later, um, he's pointing at the the clown in an iron lung painting. Oh, this, this is beautiful. And very often you'll see like memes where it's, it's that shot. Like it's just like in juxtapose. (laughs) Right. But it's the, the, the meme is the, Oh, this, this is beautiful. But instead of it being a clown and an iron lung in the painting, it's like some other meme or some like (laughs) Twitter main character of the day getting dunked on or some, some, something Mm -hmm. that's like ironically beautiful where it's just like, Oh, we're making fun of this thing. Oh, this, this is beautiful. Um, but the other the other uh, meme is from um, Tale of the Gobblewonker when Grunkle Stan is telling the story, telling the joke. Um, My ex wife misses me, but her aim is getting better. If you Google "my ex wife misses me," it was like one of like the last like flash videos ever made, where oh. <laughs> 
they like loop it. Wow, it's what a deep cut. <laughs> uh, look, 2012 was the Wild West. Um, <laughs> I know it's true. No, I know. Um, but it's it got like looped and turned into its own like weird like mouth sounds ish kind of thing. I'll 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 send a link to put into the comments so that people yeah, can I feel like experience yeah, I, it for themselves. I need like we can a, share it on the so- social medias maybe yeah and be like this thing this thing right here <laughs> that right? Thing. i like i feel like i need a visual of what exactly was going on at that time because i'm like <laughs> i did google it and i don't know what i'm supposed to be looking for oh i found the know your meme page for it i guess i'll re add that to hey. my list later <laughs> <laughs> which one the um my ex-wife misses me or the, this yeah, is beautiful. But her aim is getting better, getting better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read it. Don't read too deeply. Well, I, oh, well, I guess there's no spoilers there. I'm not sure if there's spoilers. OK, on that. Uh, if I see something there. that appears to maybe be a spoiler, I'll just like, ah, and then like ignore it. And then my brain will forget <laughs> throw about your phone it across the room. Yeah, and then my brain will forget about it in like three <laughs> In like three days, because that's how my brain yeah. works, you know? <laughs> because that's how your brain works. Same. Same. Like if I don't think mm-hmm. about it for three days, it is simply no longer in there. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't. It it left. It packed up its bags and left. Packed up exactly. its bags and left. Okay. What was I, what was my one more thing going to be? You know, if the scrapbook opportunity had not come up, that would have been my, my one more thing would have been just to get confirmation from the both of you. Does this in fact happen again in the show because i would like to see more scrapbook opportunities that is some, that is <laughs> but, a 32 ounce bottle of banjo polish <laughs> <laughs> okay okay well i'm glad it's going like, to come back and i'm glad i i clocked it as something that does come back like that is that is you got to go to costco you yeah sometimes share it with a friend because it's too much to store in your apartment like <laughs> 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 that's amazing you gotta split that order split that order you vent each yeah you gotta split it down down the middle for paypal mm-hmm. exactly and i guess it's like a one more one more thing since i'd kind of already talked about that before another moment in <laughs> which i vibe with mabel is when she's really up uh, she's like stressed about turning gideon down and dipper finds her hiding in sweater town yes, yes. It's like, well, that's a real mood. I have been there, Mabel. My my sweater town is like under is like comforter town, but you know, mm-hmm. they're neighboring cities. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, I've thought of another one. What is it? The zoo's covered in glitter. <laughs> zoo's co- oh, when he's like when he's the disco ball. Yes, that was so this good. This is why I love Zeus. You're all fired. <laughs> Zeus is down for everything. <laughs> that uh, that's was a, a really that's good another. Closer. That's another um, like trademarked word that they sort of slightly changed. Uh, I don't know if you if you heard it correctly, but Mabel says bazazzle instead of mm-hmm. bedazzle. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, I don't even know. Do they even make bedazzlers anymore? Uh, they must. Do they? I guess they do. I don't know if the brand itself is still here, but I appreciate that they were like, you know, the you know, it's like the Yahoogle on a <laughs> on Bob's Burgles. Yeah. I just Yahoogled it. OK, wait, <laughs> this is where I admit that I didn't know Bedazzle is the name of a specific item. Yes. I think like in the I 90s. Didn't, I didn't know that that was a like TM copyright something something name. I thought that to bedazzle something was simply a verb. It, yeah, it no, became, I think in the 90s, this was an actual thing i think it was it was like the early called a bedazzler yeah it was like it's like a way you can like rhinestone your own stuff so that you don't have to go to um a a gas station in central pennsylvania where there's a a lot of trucks and go to the gift Mm -hmm. shop you don't so you don't have to do that you can just bedazzle it yourself (laughs) bedazzle bedazzle we can say bedazzle Bedazzle. i didn't actually catch the bedazzle that's hilarious (laughs) it's good i love that I think, hey, we're only a little bit over an hour. So that's, I'll take the win. (laughs) We're going to take the win. Okay. Uh, Jill, where, where can, uh, where can our listeners find you? Uh, You can find me um, on Blue Sky at Mix Labradorite. That's M-X-L-A-B-R-A-D-O-R-I-T. I I had to think about how I spelled that for a second. 
Um, also, uh, I have a like link tree that I will ask Joy to put in the thing because I can get you to my socials, my YouTube channel, all all the good stuff. Yeah, please check the episode description and uh, you can find Jill's hot takes. Uh, which we're not letting Danielle take a look at yes. because there are spoilers for, for Gravity Falls. And maybe we'll just have in our wrap up episode, it'll be like, here's all of the Jill hot takes for exactly. you to watch. Danielle, we talk about it. Danielle, you can watch my uh, my video on shipping an Avatar The Last Airbender. That has no spoilers for Ooh. Gravity Falls. In it. Yeah, there you go. I mean, yes, that I would watch that I can watch. <laughs> yes. Okay, and if you're looking Perfect. for me or Joy specifically, you can check us out at Binge O'Clock Pod on Twitter and Facebook, where you can answer the question, what would your extreme tattoo be? You can also email us at bingeoclockpod at gmail.com. And don't forget, we have a Patreon. Find us at patreon.com slash bockpod. That's right. And tell your friends, tell your family, tell your loved ones, tell the live lobsters in your life about Binge O'Clock, and we will see you next time.